Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Miriam and I love books and reading and in 2021 I challenged myself to read 365 books in a year. Every week I post a weekly wrap-up video in which I tell you about the books I read in the past week. This past week I finished seven books which is the perfect amount for my challenge. Um, when I talk about the books I finished I talk about the books I finished from uh, Saturday till Friday. So this week's weekly wrap-up video is about the books I've finished from Saturday the 17th of April until Friday the 23rd of April. I think I finally found a sort of routine between work, writing and reading. Um, so well, without further ado, let's just dive into the books I've finished in the past week. Um, the first book I finished was The Magic of Ordinary Days and this book really surprised me. I did not expect a lot from it. I really did not know what it was about when I started reading it and I think that helped with the surprise and with why I liked it because I did not have any expectations of the book. It's about um, a woman who is pregnant and she's sent away by her father who is a preacher to marry someone who will accept her even though she is pregnant from someone else. Who. Uh, well, he's a soldier, the, the the father of the baby is a soldier and he just went to war because it takes place during the Second World War and um, the main character, uh, Olivia, is sent off to marry a guy who is a farmer and well, she actually gradually starts to like him and well, she's not really into the farm, she's quite intelligent, she studied history and she really wanted to do something with her life but now she has a baby it's different and she meets up with two prisoners from one of the camps where the Japanese and German people went to and actually because I recently read another book about that I think it was um, it spoke to me a bit more and well this book definitely did surprise me it, it I did I think I gave it four stars something like that it was, yeah, I did not expect I would like it so much. The next book I finished was an audiobook, the fourth book in the Ministry of Solutions series. Uh, that's a Dutch original children's book series and it's about a ministry that um, offers solutions to people while they have to offer their help anonymously and uh, it's very interesting and complicated and in this particular book um, it's actually one of the rules of the ministry is that you have to uh, help everyone whether you like them or not and in this book they have to help someone they really dislike and um, after a while it appears that this boy that they are going to help is actually the son of a silver man and the silver men are people who are against the ministry and their name is really silver men because they are descendants of a British guy named Benjamin Silver and he was uh, also he served the Ministry of Solutions but he got sick of it because he helped a lot of people and because he had to do it anonymously he did not get any credit and he did not like that so that's when he started to work against the Ministry of Solutions because the Ministry of Solutions is international so uh, yeah well um anyway they have to help someone they don't like and i think it was beautifully written and the ending it not everything was all right at the end of the book but um they did their best and uh, yeah i was satisfied with this book i really was next i read the man i think i know by mike gill uh, if you're following me for a while now you know that Mike Gill is one of my favourite authors and this book did not disappoint me. Um, in this book we follow James and Danny and they both were really successful, they went to the same um, school and after that James went to Oxford and Danny to Cambridge and um, well now it's like 15 years later and they both uh, well, their lives have been turned upside down. Danny, just after he graduated from Cambridge, he something happened and um, 
now he's on the door and he is not successful at all and they cut off his door money because um, he did not try to find a job. So then he ends up working at a care home. James was a successful businessman and recently elected MP and the night he went celebrating with his friends he got hit by a drunk guy and he suffered brain damage so now he can't really walk properly and talk properly uh, he can talk but people have a hard time understanding him and things like that um, and these guys meet they when they went to the same school they were not friends and but also not enemies but um, James sees Danny and he describes him as the man I think I know and uh, somehow Danny ends up being the caretaker of James and things happen and um, yeah uh, because the book gets taught from the perspectives of James and Danny and, um, and my guilt ha really ha gave them distinct voices like um, yeah, it was really obvious when James was speaking and Danny, also because it was on top of the page, but also because they had like these distinct voices. And I think it was really well done. Even though at the ending, I had some questions with the ending for James, whether it wasn't a bit too good. But however, I like this book, so I'm not questioning it at all. Well, the next book I read was uh, An Haushouder by Marilyn Robinson, the Dutch translation of Housekeeping. I heard so many great stories of this author and I was really curious about this book. And my my, it did disappoint me. And I don't know why, or, or well, I sort of, the, yeah, to me it was a boring book and well, there was a tragic story, but it did not feel really tragic because of the writing style. And I know that lots and lots of people really like this book, but I didn't. I'm sorry. I I don't know. I, yeah, it did not do anything to me. The next book I read was a Dutch original, Ik Blijt Voor Jou, or I think you can translate it as My Plea Is For You, by Marijke Vos which is about two lawyers and they have to handle a divorce and um, well obviously these two lawyers fall in love and things happen and it's complicated it's just it feel good and it reads so quickly and well I was really happy about this book also because Marijke Vos is I think one of the f few Dutch feel-good authors that do not have like these very descriptive scenes or no um oh how should I say this um I do not really like reading well if I say I do not li really like I really don't like scenes um that take place in a bedroom let's just put it like that and you get what I mean right I do not like that and especially when the language is really descriptive i mean if it's just they went to the bedroom blah blah that's sort of okayish i yeah but um um Marijke Vos does not do these scenes he just uh yeah well there obviously there is romance in her books and it's heavy romance but not descriptive scenes and i really appreciate that in her books and it actually brings me to the next book I finished, <laughs> On Stories by C.S. Lewis. And uh, this is um, a collection of essays on his book reviews and story writing and all sorts of things. Uh, I did not like all the essays, but quite a few. And actually, one of my favourites was where he writes about George Orwell, about 1984 and Animal Farm because C.S. Lewis considers Animal Farm far better than 1984 because these two books deal with the same issue but um, 1984 has too many bedroom scenes according to C.S. Lewis and he dislikes it that the success of books 
is determined by whether there are many bedroom scenes in them. It's a good thing that C.S. Lewis did not live to see the day when Fifty Shades of Grey came out, I think. Anyway, um, I have read 1984 and I have not read Animal Farm yet, so after reading that essay it uh, ended up on my TBR, so uh, I'm curious, curious about that book. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I did not like all the essays, but uh, there were definitely a few that I did enjoy. And the last book I finished this week was Margot by Sophie Zelstra, a Dutch original book. A book on Margot Frank, the sister of Anne Frank. And this book was a huge disappointment. Um, the writing style was really bad. And it feels a bit harsh to judge people on their writing style, but it... I mean, she did, her, she did a lot of research on the subject, but then the writing style was so bad. It, this story could have been told a lot better. And according to some reviews I read on Goodreads, the character of Margot was totally different from how we get to know her in Anne Frank's diary. I did read that diary, but it's so long ago, I can't remember exactly how Margot was described. And this book also had some bedroom scenes that were totally unnecessary. So this book was a huge disappointment to me and I will uh, not recommend it to other people. Luckily it's only available in Dutch, so if you're English you, you can't read this book. So. Um, well, these were the books I read in the past week. Um, I had some strong opinions about that. Um, let me know in a comment what do you think of the scenes I described. Do you uh, like to read that or also not a big fan of it? Let me know in a comment. And um, if you want to follow me on my journey where I read 365 books, then consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, happy reading.